Hi, I'm Damien. And I'm Judy. And we're here tonight at Fevolution Topics Health and Wellbeing. For me, health is on uh, three levels, physical, mental and spiritual. I'm doing this not just from my own body and my own ego, but there's a bigger thing going on. We're just changing the world. Go out there and live your life to the full potential. If you can find that balance between a fit body and a fit mind, you can do anything. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. I'm really um, a nervous public speaker, so please bear with me. Um, so yeah, I'm Bex. Um, I'm really excited to be here today talking to you guys. I'm just going to talk a little bit about my journey um, from borderline alcoholic, massive smoker, um, junk food lover to becoming a mom and um, just completely changing my life. Um, I've called this how everything going wrong saved my life because it pretty much did. So um, a little bit about myself, I'm 29, only for another four weeks, which is scary. Um, this is my daughter. I've pretty much only learned how to do this presentation so that I can show you cute pictures of my kid. Um, <laughs> I'm married to a musician um, and I own a small vegan um, breakfast company called Bexfest and I've got my pots here today. Um, I'll be talking about them a little bit. Um, I love to run um, and I have chronic fatigue. I say chronic fatigue have I because I don't feel like a sufferer. I've learned how to cope with it and live with it and it's just less owning. So um, yeah, and I have her. Um, and I've been vegan for two years and three months now. And again, a nervous public speaker, so please bear with me. I'm sweating under here like you wouldn't believe. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this. Okay, so this was me um, when I was about 21. Um, and I was, I kind of grew up as one of those girls that really just didn't like myself very much. I felt very uncomfortable in whatever I wore. Um, I was sexually abused as a kid and I think I decided, to, well I didn't decide, I took on a lot of feelings that weren't mine to have, um, guilt, shame, embarrassment, um, and nobody knew. Um, so this was all going on in my head and it kind of was a very bad breeding ground for um, trying to be a positive person. And um, yeah, so I hate myself, I find it very difficult to get dressed. There were many times I wouldn't end up going out. I would sit in front of the mirror crying and pulling up my stomach because I hated myself so much. Um, it's one of the reasons that I only wear black now because I learned it as a coping mechanism to just get dressed. Like, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna get dressed. Everything in my wardrobe goes, it's, everything is black. I've got maybe one white t-shirt and a gray <laughs> one. Um, but it just, it solves so many problems for me, so I do that. Um, I had massive depression, although everyone thought I was extremely happy, extremely bubbly. Um, and that was kind of like my alter ego because I knew that person was inside me, but I hadn't been able to really tap into that. Um, I really believed that everybody else was happy, that everybody else was fine and living these great lives and um, they had more money and more friends and everybody liked them. Um, it's obviously not true. And now that I've grown up and I have reconnected with these people, it's really funny to see how they were all in the same boat and, you know, we were all the same. Um, and I think when you have these feelings, it's really easy to um, get into negative relationships with friends, with boyfriends, girlfriends. Um, I never really felt worthy of having somebody's full love or attention, so I only kind of dated really bad guys, um, which never worked out, and it was really awful. Um, and a victim of circumstance, like everything was like, oh, woe is me, because obviously this is all going to go wrong, because that's what I deserve in life. So. Um, that was all very tragic and I was hiding it under this persona of someone that was really happy and doing their thing. I was a singer and songwriter. I started working when I was 16 um, and I was really lucky. I got into a lot of um, great shows and I got to do lots of stuff and I ended up being flown to and from America to write and record an album while I was also um, writing and recording stuff here and I started to sign records. Um, to some major house labels, which was really exciting. Um, and the last time that I was in America, I actually met the man that I'm now married to. He's from North London. We had those mutual friends. It was like really random. But um, uh, we, um, uh, yeah, so that was all great. You know, he was the first nice guy that I ever actually allowed into my space. I was so done with guys and he'd had some pretty bad relationships as well. So we were just kind of very raw, very open. And he kind of, he just knew me before I even said it. He was like, you're not that person, you know, you are somebody else. So um, yeah, so that was great. A year later I was pregnant. <laughs> and um, that was the same week that I found out that I had been offered two record deals. 
Um, so I was three months pregnant, which was uh, quite far in. I actually thought I was dying because I didn't want to smoke anymore. <laughs> I'd just gone off cigarettes. Um, and yeah, so I gave up the chance to have the two record deals and I chose to have this baby, which was really crazy. I wasn't into kids. I didn't like anyone bringing their babies near me. I didn't want to hold them. I wasn't just that way inclined. But I felt like a connection, like a purpose for my life was then like starting. And um, so we had her and she was a girl. We didn't know what we were having until she came. And it was a little girl and she was amazing. My husband went back on tour when she was like three days old. So it was really hard learning how to be a mom um, when you're kind of on your own a bit. But um, I'm really glad for that time now because I've got such an amazing connection. I don't know if any of you follow me on Instagram, but me and my daughter, she's like, a, she's got way more followers on Instagram than I do. Everybody loves her. Um, but uh, I'm really glad for that now. But when I was, when she was maybe like six months old, I noticed that I was falling back into these cycles of really disliking myself and um, not being able to get dressed. And I'd eaten cake pretty much my whole pregnancy. So she, I always say she's like, 80% Cherry Bakewell inside, <laughs> like she really is. Um, and um, I just, I suddenly had this thought that I was bringing another female into this world and I, it tore me apart to think of her ever disliking herself, to ever think of her like looking at herself and feeling anything but like amazing self-love and confidence. And so I decided that I was gonna be the role model I wish that I had. So for a, <laughs> um, a quite big smoking person that knew nothing about nutrition, um, I decided I was going to start running. It was like free, you, you can get to doing it as soon as you leave the house. It was obviously a problem because my lungs were full of tar. Um, and so cigarettes were the first thing to go. I had to get rid of them. And um, after that, I started running and I started to really love it. I wasn't the sort of person that would just leave my kid with anyone so I could do my own thing. I think maybe like seven or eight people have ever looked after her and she's five now. Um, I was getting up at 5.30 in the morning to go for a run while she was asleep and my husband was asleep. He was working really crazy hours so it had to be at a time where they were both occupied. And um, so I really committed to making a change. And it was the best thing I've ever done because all those negative feelings that I was feeling about myself were being unwritten by doing something positive to affect the change. Um, and I just totally fell in love with it. But after a while, I'd like lost a lot of weight um, and I started to plateau and I thought there must be more to this than just the exercise side. And then I started looking at food. Oh my God, did you know that you can eat and not feel guilty? <laughs> it's like unreal, like it can actually help your body. Um, it sounds so crazy to even think that there was a time, like 26 years of my life, that I didn't know that. Um, and so, yeah, so I started to look at that. I started to go into clean eating, um, which is unprocessing everything, and that made loads of sense. I was like, yeah, I don't know what any of these ingredients are on the label, so I might as well get rid of that. Um, started cutting out refined sugars, so obviously the cake had to go, which was my massive problem because I love cake which is why I started making my breakfast pots, um, because they all taste like cake, but they're all natural. They're all like whole food ingredients. Um, I never knew it was going to be a business at that point. It was literally just me at home in my pajamas, like not having had a shower for like four days, like <laughs> baby screaming at me, I need some cake. Um, so yeah, so I started running and started eating better. And the more I learned, the more it made sense. And I think, you know, we live in a world where a lot of people are happy to be ignorant. And um, I have a lot of friends that are like, oh, just don't tell me. Don't tell me about the animals. Don't tell me about because they just, they don't want to make the change. And I was the least likely vegan that there ever was. Um, that was never like my intention. So, um, but as the more I learned, it kind of just made sense to cut things out. Um, I got a little bit too obsessed with the exercise. Um, I let it get to my ego. People telling me that I'd lost so much weight um, as someone that who had never like been able to lose weight before, it was um, massively appealing to me to then be the skinny person. And it had gone past um, just being fit. I was now looking like a lollipop. My head looked massive, my body. I had always been about nine stone. Big size 10, small size 12. Um, I was now seven and a half stone and a size six and still believing I was fat. I think there's actually a picture. It doesn't look as severe as it was in real life, but on this one, I remember the caption for this picture was something like, oh, people said if I run too much, I'll end up looking like a boy. And 
I'd lost all of my curves. I've always been a little bit more like this. Um, and then I just started to lose a little bit too much. And it actually got to the point where I was planning my wedding. And I don't like planning things. I don't like anything like that. It stresses me out. And a combination of massively restricting my calories, working out even if it got to 12 o'clock at night and I had, hadn't worked out, I would make myself do it at midnight. Um, and I started to get really ill. I started to lose the function in my legs. Um, I lost most of the function in my arms, couldn't lift a fork to my face, couldn't lift up my daughter. Um, and it was really scary because I had no idea what was going on. I thought, you know, protein, obviously, I've started cutting out meat a bit, it must be the protein. Up the protein, still no change. Went to the doctors and they said, well, it could be vitamin D deficiency. You know, I wasn't deficient on anything else. Um, vitamin D a little bit, but I think we all are. We live in the UK. Um, to lose function of my body for it, it, w it wasn't that bad. Um, uh, my levels of vitamin D. So I started taking it and nothing changed. Um, I was still working out. I was still carrying on trying to fit into this tiny little wedding dress that I um, had fitted to like literally to the bone. And um, it was just really stressful and really scary. And it got to the point where I was meant to be going on my Hindu and we would planned to go to Paris for the day, which I love Paris so much. Um, and me and some friends were gonna go. And I'm not a quitter. You have to understand this about me. I'm not a quitter. My commitment to alcohol and cigarettes will tell you as much. I am just like, I love it. Um, I love life. I love doing things. I hate being bored. I hate not doing stuff. So for me to text my friends the day before and say, I can't get to Paris, it was a real big deal. It wasn't just me throwing it to the wind and be like, oh, we'll go another time. It wasn't that. Um, I literally was falling asleep all of the time. And then something happened, my friend called me, and it, this may sound insignificant, but it kind of changed a lot of mental uh, process for me. My friend has MS, and she called me and she said, Beck, do you wanna go to Paris? And I was like, I really do, but I'm falling asleep, I can't use my legs. A lot of the time, I lost feeling in like different parts of my legs. And um, she was like, look, I've got an option for you. It's not glamorous, I hate it, but when I'm not feeling well, it gets me out there and whatever. So do you wanna use my wheelchair and we'll go to Paris? And I was like, oh, fuck it, let's go. So we went. <laughs> um, so it's like me and my sister, who's over there, um, a few of our friends, um, me in the wheelchair, and we went, and um, it chucked it down with rain, and I couldn't use my arms, so I couldn't hold an umbrella, so we had like a plastic poncho. <laughs> I think I've got a picture, this is my favourite picture. Oh, hold on, let me turn this back on. It was like, this is me in the wheelchair, and my sister. It was honestly the best day, and I'm so glad that my friend um, had given me that option, and I think that changed a lot for me. I just suddenly thought, you know, whenever everything is really bad, there's always an option, there's always something you can do um, to make a change. It might not be completely, but it can help you. And this started like a mental process for me that was like really strengthening. And having that day was just incredible because I would have been so bummed if I'd missed out. And I think that would have started me feeling very negative. And um, so yeah, so that was all great. And um, look at my face, <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, so then we get closer to the wedding and um, the week before my wedding, I went back to the doctors and I said, you know, I need, whatever you're giving me, I need a little bit more of it because this isn't really doing anything, this vitamin D. So they gave me like, I think it was like 20,000 units or something of vitamin D and it still didn't make any difference whatsoever. I had loads of protein. My mum had come round and like force fed me a load of red meat because she was like, oh, you're not eating red meat, that's why it is. Um, none of it made a difference to my body. Um, and I'd had to have the talk with my dad about carrying me down the aisle, which was sad and scary, but luckily that didn't happen. I think adrenaline kicked in for the day and it was all fine. But the last doctor that I saw um, after my wedding, he said to me, um, he was a young guy, so I don't think he'd like been through the system a lot and he was willing to be a bit of a rebel. And he said, you need to, um, to go home and work out. And I was like, somebody just carried me in here, like you can't be serious. And he said, if this is chronic fatigue or ME, um, this may be you forever. This may, might last a year, might be forever. Um, and if you come back in six months without having done anything, your body would have got used to not doing anything and you're gonna be a lot weaker and I'm only gonna be able to prescribe you a, um, a basic workout routine and you're not gonna be able to do it and you're gonna give up. 
So I was like, well, that's a bit brash, isn't it? I was like, oh, okay. So I went home and I spoke to my, um, my other half and I said, look, he wants me to go for a run. He was like, well, what are you going to do? So I said, well, I'm going to prove him wrong and I'm going to go for this run and it's going to be awful and then I can just say that I've done it and, you know, he was wrong. So I got dressed for this run and I fell asleep at least twice while I was getting dressed um, and I felt awful. I couldn't feel a lot of my body and um, I went for the run. And now me being me, I didn't go for like a run around the block. I did a 5K and um, I cried pretty much the whole way. I fell over a lot because I couldn't feel my legs and when you're running, legs are pretty useful. Um, so um, I did it, but when I got home, I felt incredible. And I don't even think it was just a physical thing. It was like mentally freeing. And freedom, um, running for me has always been a freedom. It was my freedom from being a mom and a girlfriend. When um, I first had her, it was like my only time on my own. And again, it was reinstating that in me, that it was like a freedom to be able to use my body, even if I couldn't feel it. So I was running on the memory of what it felt like to pound the pavement. And um, the more I did it, um, I, I stopped killing myself with exercise. I'd literally only do it when I felt really bad. Um, and every time, it just kind of picked me up, put me in the right space to, um, to carry on. And um, then I started looking into people who live with ME and how they do it um, and live a normal lifestyle. And a lot of these people were plant-based. So I thought, OK, we'll give it a go. We'll do it for a month. Um, I only had, at this point, feta cheese, maybe once or twice a week meat, maybe like chicken and fish um, and eggs. I lived on eggs. Uh, cheese wasn't my thing. I know for a lot of vegans it's cheese, but for me it was eggs. I absolutely loved them. Um, but I cut it all out and I thought, I'll do it for a month, see how I feel. And just over two years later, I, I barely get any relapses. I barely feel ill. Um, I have maybe a week or so every year that um, I feel bad, but other than that, I'm well. Um, and it's been a fantastic journey. It's meant that I can do so much with my life. And I have a lot of people that message me and say, how do you live the way that you do? And I honestly believe that um, body weight exercise, I do a lot of body weight exercise as well, and strengthening the muscles that I use to run um, so that if I can't use them as well, then I know they're working behind the scenes. I don't have to worry about it in my head. I know that they're powering themselves. Um, so yeah, plant-based diet and, um, and, uh, and eating really well. Because I eat a whole foods um, vegan diet as well. I'm not like, I didn't even know there was vegan junk food until like about a year ago. Um, so this is me and my daughter. She does everything with, oh, go back. Um, I kind of feel like I've succeeded with my mission um, to start the right road for my daughter to not have to learn all the bad habits that I had learned through life. And she knows a lot about food, she knows a lot about the exercise, and she knows about balance as well. You know, she's a kid, she's going to eat some junk and whatever. This is, I think she's like two and a half here, she's so cute. Um, and this is us. Um, I make breakfast, breakfast is really my thing. Um, oats in particular, absolutely love them. Um, mornings are great and I just feel like this life that I've been able to live now through making choices that were hard to start with um, it's really changed a lot for me am I worth time yeah, yeah okay um, and so these are the changes so from the first list um, uh, there was a lot of negative things on there and now I love I say mostly love my body because I'm female still um, uh, <laughs> um, and now where I used to feel um, very lacking in confidence and I needed to drink to be confident, now I'm confident in who I am as a person. Like that is where my confidence is, comes from now, not like some, I do love a wine, don't get me wrong. Um, and I'm happy and thankful. Like I really am thankful for everything that went wrong. Um, for, you know, I say wrong, getting pregnant at a time where, you know, it could have been, I could have, lived my dream job. I had two chances at my dream job and I'm so glad that I turned that down to have her. Um, I'm thankful for chronic fatigue. I'm thankful for all the things that it's taught me um, about who I am as a person, the strength that I have. Um, I truly feel blessed. Um, rather than feeling like everyone really had it better than me, I feel blessed to be who I am. Um, I now only have positive relationships. Anyone that comes with any negativity, I, I feel no way to just be like, it's, it's not for me. It, you know, not everyone is for everyone. Um, thankful for my circumstances and I'm worthy of love, as is everybody here, you know. Whether we 
or hashtag goals at the moment or you know not it's like it makes you no less worthy of love like you are so worthy um okay these are my um things so i just want to say as well that um it's not the person you are when you're happy that determines who you like what you're made of it's the person that you are when times are really tough and i think it's those decisions that we need to make um that really change everything and you know it's easy to be a very kind generous person when you're in a happy situation you've got loads of money and you know whatever but when you've got nothing and when you need help it's that asking for help and looking inside yourself and saying can i actually do this like have i got the capacity to to do things that are really hard and i think we do um but we don't often know them until we need them so i'm really thankful for the stuff that went wrong that made it easy for me to like myself um, because ultimately I can now bring up my daughter in a way where she is in a positive relationship with herself and she doesn't need to worry about all this made up media bullshit that is put upon <laughs> everyone but girls in particular. Um, so yeah, so that's me and um, yeah. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Thank you. The microphone is so sweaty. <laughs> um, are we doing questions? Yeah. So we're going to do a quick Q and A. I literally probably have enough time to do questions. So anyone have a question for Bex? Nikki, you the mic Thank you. Hello. I listened to the other one, sorry, I was a bit late, but where, where can you get your pets? So there, there's some on a table over here today, and there's a shop just literally across the road that sells them. There's also one in Alexandra Palace called um, Our Cottage, and there's one in Brixton um, Market as well, so I'm looking to expand at the moment. But um, yeah, there's three shops at the moment. And I do a Saturday delivery system as well, so... <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Um, you're amazing. Thank you. Um, I had a question about um, how you're bringing up your daughter in terms of what she needs. And we have been trying to kind of um, bring up the children. And we're flirting with each other. My partner's vegan, but I'm not quite there. Yet. <laughs> and I still find it hard to, to think about bringing up my daughter who's nearly three completely vegan. Mm. Okay, um, so I, my husband isn't vegan. My husband's um, like the complete opposite. He loves everything full fat and um, carnivorous. And um, I, um, when we got together, obviously I ate those of meat. Um, so I'm working on him. He's cutting things out slowly, but um, I don't know if he'll ever be vegan. Because we live completely different um, schedules, he's, um, he gets up way after us. He goes to bed way after us. We, don't, we very rarely eat together. So she eats vegan like 98% of the time. And whenever she's with me, she eats vegan. She eats a meal with him maybe like once a week um, that he's prepared. And mostly he makes that vegan as well. So um, maybe once a month she has meat. Um, but she's starting to understand it now. And she's actually started asking the questions because I didn't want to force it on her and be like, you're vegan um, because it kind of demonizes my husband at the same time. So it's a very delicate situation. but. The more we talk about it, she's coming to her own conclusions. She actually said to me the other day, Mum, I'm, I really want to be vegan now. I understand it. So, you know, that's great for, for me. But, um, yeah, as long as you, you know what you're feeding them, I think it's, it's great for them. She's way ahead of her um, school class. Um, she doesn't have behavioural issues, really. She's, I think the food really makes a difference. So, yeah, consider it. <laughs> um, so one last question, Alex. Thank you, Rush. That was amazing and inspirational. Um, Thank you. Now you're an amazing entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> so do you think you'll ever become an artist again and sing again? Actually, it's really funny. <laughs> Someone's actually just done a remix of one of my old de uh, defected songs. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing this. <laughs> if you felt how sweaty this microphone is from me just talking, it's like, I said to Damien, I'm really sorry, this is really sweaty. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to sing. But um, someone's actually just done a remix of one of my old songs that was 
uh, signs are defected. And so now I've got a lot of people getting back in contact with me. And so, yes, possibly. <laughs> OK, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>